Pat Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. We are uh, loaded up today with stuff that's just going to, it'll astonish you. I mean, you may have seen some of this, but it needs to be seen again if you did. And if you missed it, you certainly need to know about it. Uh, Beto O'Rourke, I think, just did something that blew up in his face. Uh, He thought he was going to score some big political points here. Maybe make some inroads into beating Greg Abbott in November for the governor of Texas. He was just going to show how brave he is, and he was going to stand up and speak to power. That's what he was going to do. Sadly, he chose a uh, an unbelievable moment to try to do it. They were having a big press conference in Uvalde in, a, uh, in an auditorium, and Governor Abbott was there. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick was there, the mayor, uh, lots of luminaries were there, and they were talking about, they were giving information on the shooting. Some things that we didn't know, hadn't heard before, and they were trying to tell the the community how to get help. They've made mental wellness a real priority, and anybody who thinks that they can't deal with this can seek help. And I got the impression for free. So, I mean, they're really trying to do some things here. And then here's Beto O'Rourke with his confrontation uh, with Greg Abbott. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sit down. You're out of you're out of line and an embarrassment. Sit down. Next shooting is right now, and you are doing nothing. No, he needs to get his ass out of here. This isn't the place to talk to this over. This is totally predictable. When you, sir, you're out of line. Sir, you are out of line. Sir, you are out of line. Please leave this auditorium. I can't believe you're a sick son of a bitch that would come to a deal like this to make a political issue. Yeah. Wow. Don McLaughlin, mayor of Uvalde. Well said. Well yeah, said. You want me to come in? Sick so son of a some bitch. Developments here at this news conference. All right. Uh, just amazing. I was. It, do you know anybody who thought that was a good thing? Hey, Boy. yeah, I really like what Beto did there. That was great. Yeah, we just no. witnessed a uh, political miscalculation. Yeah, big time. Big time. Now, he wasn't going to win... In Texas, anyway, but uh, that certainly didn't help him at all. And do we, you remember the uh, 15 year old Beto O'Rourke who once wrote a murder fantasy short story about running over children hmm. with a car? Hmm. Um, hmm. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so the guy who's up there uh, yelling at uh, Greg Abbott yeah. for not doing enough to protect the children. Whereas he wrote. F- murder fantasies about killing children so bizarre i'd forgotten he did that um and according to a new report it also revealed the uh that he was a member of a famous hacking group the details were uncovered in a reuters report on the cult of the dead cow a famous group of hackers credited with inventing the term hacktivism well isn't that is they must be very proud their families must be proud too But the report also revealed that teenage Beto, in connection with the group, wrote those stories uh, under the name Psychedelic Warlord. Okay. (laughs) And at the time of this story, at least, they were still online. Now, I don't don't know if they finally took them down or not. Yeah, this story came out. This was in 2019. Mm -hmm. Uh, One piece in particular detailed the narrator's murder spree as part of his goal, seeking the termination of everything that was free and loving. Peace described the first kill as the murder of two children crossing the street. Ah, jeez. In, in light of everything going on, I'm, I'm not going to read what oh, he actually said. Yeah. Uh, that, it's graphic. It's horrific. Uh, as the mayor of Uvalde said, he's a sick son of a bitch. He is. He's deranged. He's the guy who needs to take advantage of mental health services that might be offered. Yeah. And oh, I absolutely. did actually tweet at Beto O'Rourke yesterday. And if I get a response, I'll be sure to share it here on the show. But uh, it was a simple <clears> question. And it was a sincere one as a Texas voter. I want him to post his resume. I want to see his resume Mm. from the time he was a kid up to today. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, he married into a a wealthy family, and I don't know that he's done too much uh, to uh, earn a living. And I would just, you know, I'm curious. I'd like to see what he's done. 
Yeah, his father-in-law is a billionaire. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't really have to do much of anything. It seems like all he does is run for public office. That's that's about it. And get his butt kicked. Mm. Crazy. You remember this line? Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your Mm AK-47. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. Okay, and then now that he's running for Texas governor, he knows he can't be known for that, so he's completely washed that out. (laughs) I'm not for taking anything from anybody, he said. I, I'm just about protecting the Second Amendment. Oh, you are? Uh-huh. Huh. I think the terms reinvent himself. Matt. Interesting. Every election cycle, Beto reinvents himself. <laughs> so, you know he's got no principles whatsoever. He just goes with the political tide. If he's running in Texas, he's all about guns. If he's running nationally, uh, we're going to take him from you. That is unreal. Also, time... Put out a little. Uh, this is a tweet yesterday. Tweet. This is not doctored. This is not photoshopped. This is how Time tweeted it. And as of last night, it was still up on their uh, Twitter profile on their feed. <laughs> this is so funny. Correction: Beto O'Rourke confronts Texas Governor Abbott about gun control do- during Uvalde press conference. The original version of this tweet misspelled Beto O'Rourke's name. It is Beto, not Beta. <laughs> okay. I mean, that is a conservative joke. <laughs> Beta O'Rourke. He's a beta male. And and Time Magazine actually tweeted out that. I was mm-hmm. going to see if they still left it up here. I'm going to find out. That is so funny. It's great. His name actually isn't Beto either. It's like Bob That's... or something, right? Isn't it Robert O'Rourke? Or, I don't know. But they started calling him Robert... Beto because... Yeah, Robert Francis. O'Rourke. Yeah, Robert Francis. Uh-huh. Yeah, because he thought it was hip and uh, yeah. might get him some... Uh... Some Hispanic votes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's going to. I really don't think it's going to. Uh, but yesterday was a mind-numbing day because because everybody's politicizing it. Mm-hmm. Everybody's politicizing this horrible, horrible tragedy. Um, and they're shameless. They're absolutely shameless about it. Steve Kerr, the other night, after his basketball game, this guy is unreal. Uh, after his... After his game, he didn't want to talk about the game. He wanted to talk uh, about this tragedy. When are we going to do something? I'm tired. I'm, I'm so tired of getting up here and offering condolences to, to the mm-hmm. devastated families that are out there. I'm so tired of the, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm tired of the moments of silence. Enough. Pause it. The conceit of this There's guy 50- is... It knows no bounds. It's absolutely a stunning. Like, who even cares what you think or or what you have to say about this particular incident? You're a basketball coach. Just coach basketball. You don't have to comment at all. If you're tired of commenting, don't comment on it. How about that? All right, there was more. <laughs> it's too easy. There's 50 senators right now who refuse to vote on H.R. 8. <laughs> which is a background check rule that the House passed Mm -hmm. a couple years ago. It's been sitting there for two years. And there's a reason they won't vote on it, to hold on to power. Is is that the reason? So I ask you, You Mitch McConnell, I ask all of you senators who refuse to do anything about the violence and school shootings and supermarket shootings, I ask you, are you going to put your own desire for power ahead of the lives of our children and our elderly and our churchgoers? Yeah. Uh, He's babbling about senators, Republican senators, who are holding on to power. Really? Uh, What are your thoughts, Steve, on China killing the Uyghurs and putting them in concentration camps and getting rid of them by the millions? Can you share your thoughts on that with us right now? Or are you too busy holding on to your $5 million a year job as an NBA basketball coach? Where's your thoughts on China? Uh, You're profiting from them, and you won't say a word about it, just like the rest of the NBA. With one exception, there's one guy in the NBA speaking out about it. Yeah, don't give me that. You're sick and tired of these Republicans trying to hold on to their power. What are you doing? And then we have Whoopi Goldberg from The View. She is so incredibly stupid. Uh, here's what, uh, she had to say. She's talking, first of all, she wants to deputize, deputize, uh, citizens or some weird thing. 
Leslie, listen, I, I want to thank Governor Abbott because he signed 22 bills mm -hmm. this year, making it easier for mass shooters to buy, carry, oh, and own guns in his state. Mm -hmm. Let's apply his abortion laws to guns by deputizing citizens <laughs> to sue anyone involved in gun violence. So you sold an AR-15 at the gun show? Mm -hmm. See you in court. Does your neighbor have too big an arsenal? Call the cops. Actually, let's invoke some Supreme Bizarre. Court logic, too. Oh, Alito okay. says abortion's not in the Constitution. Well, neither are AR-15s. So <laughs> I guess the Constitution Oops. doesn't cover them either. Pause it. Life is so uh, sacred. Yeah, the Constitution does. It's called the Second Amendment. Ugh. <laughs> AR-15s are in the Constitution, Putin. Abortion isn't in the Constitution, but guns are. AR-15s are guns. Thus, they're protected by the Second Amendment. How can she continue to be on national television when she is this butt stupid? It's just painful to have to hear and see her, isn't uh -huh. it? I yeah. mean, the dumb things she says that are flat out provably wrong every time she says them. It's, it's mind boggling. And, and what, honestly, as an honest question, this isn't rhetorical. What are more laws going to do? Um, you had Hunter Biden lie on a federal form for these background checks that they Yeah, that's want. such a good point. I mean, is it, yeah. He, are you addicted to drugs? I, I think Hunter's been addicted to drugs his entire life. Mm -hmm. And so he lies on the form. You can't stop that. He goes and gets a gun because of it. And then, of course, right, dummy. Oh, never mind. Let's just go. It's like, why don't you point out close to home? Why don't you take care of your own family, Joe, before you start trying to get everybody else's guns? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, yeah that would be. Because you'll remember his that would be great. sister-in-law slash lover found the gun, mm -hmm. threw it in a dumpster. Remember some other guy who dumpster dives every day That's finds right. it. Jeez. And the police go back to the guy who sold it. I don't understand how... They never look at close to home. Nothing. They never look at themselves. On the Bidens. Nothing. And that didn't stop anything. They're completely covered. The Bidens are completely covered by the, by the media. Nobody ever goes after them. Jeez. Uh, and then there's uh, Eric Swalwell. Did you see that he had a new tweet about his four-year-old boy? Do you remember the last one? <laughs> he FaceTimed him about... Uh, yeah, FaceTimed him about that bad man and why yeah. he did that in, in Buffalo. Okay. Uh, so now he tweets out, my little boy just asked, "No, did the bad guy from the grocery store come back? Okay. Is he going to come to our house? Now the mega Republicans will mock my son. No, we're mocking you, yeah. Eric. Or say I'm making this up as they did when he asked about Buffalo. But these are the questions parents are fielding tonight. I know my one-year-old Yeah, just tweeted out, uh, when are we going to do something about climate change and the climate change disasters that continue to occur? Bro. I'm like, you're, you're one. One-year-old. Why do you, I mean, how do you even know about it? No kidding. Especially in my house. I don't... Uh, we're not talking around the dinner table about how bad climate change is. You have a genius on your hands. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But that's, yeah. that's what happens. Those are the kinds of questions people are fielding right now. <laughs> Eric Swalwell, I swear, <laughs> he had to make up that tweet mm -hmm. after the other one mm -hmm. just so he could say, oh, Republicans See? are going to come after me now. Yes. Yeah. And it shows that his boy does this all the time. My four-year-old is doing <laughs> He's really politically active. Mm -hmm. Why does he even know about this shooting? Why don't you keep him from that kind of uh, horrific information? If your little kid, Jeez. Eric, is this perceptive, that's going to be an awkward conversation uh, with him about Feng Feng. <laughs> well, I, I want him to... Oh, my uh, three-year-old yeah. just texted me about his, uh, his Chinese spy uh, bedmate. <laughs> that's weird that you would yeah. bring it up. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. Why, Why isn't Eric Swalwell made to answer... For spending two years betting down Fang Fang, the Chinese spy. That's what my three year old just asked me. Wow. You got a lot of smart kids in your <laughs> I household. Do. I do. They, they really are. <laughs> <laughs> you would think he would kind of, I don't know, try to fly under the radar after the whole Fang Fang situation. No. But no. No. He's worse than he was before. Because this goes to the credo of the left 
and it's no self awareness. Yeah. No shame. That is true. And they just litter rip. <clears throat> I mean, we've only started with the insanity uh, today from from the left as far as politicians. Oh, there's so much. Uh, it just it it there's never so ends. It never ends. And let's not forget how these people act in the face of tragedy. Uh, do you remember the the funeral for Senator Paul Wellstone? Mm-hmm. Um, and how Democrats turned that into some kind of pep rally? Mm-hmm. Here's an example of uh, some of what went on at that fun- funeral. I am begging you, please, let the people of this state hear your voice on his behalf to keep his legacy alive it's appropriate. and help us win this election. No, I don't think so. Mm. And keep fighting for social and economic justice. Say yes. Jeez. We will win. We will win. Uh-huh. We will win. We will win. No. We will you didn't. Win. So. Unreal. That's a funeral. Yeah. We love you. Thank you. Yes. Unreal. Do you remember who the embarrassing uh, uh, Democrats put up there at the last minute to to fill that Democrat spot? It was Walter Mondale. <laughs> Walter Mondale. And uh, here's a shock. Wow. He lost. Yeah. To yeah. Norm Coleman. Yeah, they didn't win, uh, even though they screamed about it at the funeral. Yeah, and then and that was his son, by the way. Yeah, yeah. What was it? Uh, is that is that the seat? Yeah, that's a seat. Six years later, right? That they stole with uh, that comedian guy from Saturday Night Live? Mm-hmm. Al, Al Franken. Franken? Yeah. That's the I one. think it was. Yeah. I forgot there was an interim uh, person in there with uh, Norm, but that's amazing that they put up Walter Mondale. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> that shows how deep their bench is, doesn't it? And it just shows how inappropriate <laughs> they are in times yeah. of mourning. Really horrible. They, they, really, really horrible. They, they politicize Every Everything. dead body. Yep. Except for babies, I mean. Whew. Um, all right. Let me take a minute and tell you about uh, Bank on Yourself. Now, we've all been kind of conditioned, brainwashed, if you will, to believe that the only way to grow our money for retirement is, is through the stock market and risk everything we have on this volatility that's going on right now. I mean, if you if you like that, if you like the up and down and the... And wondering if your money's going to be there in the long run, then, you know, I guess you, you'd you keep it there. But uh, there are other ways to go about this. There is a tried and true method uh, for retirement plans that has never had a losing year in over 160 years. Guaranteed predictable growth and retirement income with no luck, skill, or guesswork required. In fact, Bank on Yourself has a 160-year-plus track record of positive growth. Uh, You'll know what your tax rate will be in retirement. Zero under current tax law, which protects you from the uh, coming tax tsunami. You can have liquidity. You can still get access to your money for any purpose with uh, no questions asked. And even use it for purchases or opportunities without interrupting the growth of those dollars. Get some peace of mind. Try something different. Try something that has a 160-year track record of positive results. You can get a free report with all the details of how adding bank on yourself to your financial plan can help you take control back on your money. Just go to bankonyourself.com slash unleashed. That's bankonyourself.com slash unleashed. At Gray Unleashed. Uh, The Miami Heat put up some nice politics on their scoreboard last night. That's great. Jeez. Support common sense gun laws by calling 202. I'm not even going to give the number. But you can learn how to register to vote at heat.com slash vote. All right. That's great. The NBA is going to tell you how to to vote and what you can do to bring about an end to the Second Amendment. You can call your congressman and 
ask them to speak out on the Uyghurs' behalf. Yeah, China, right. <laughs> right. And uh, how the NBA makes billions of dollars there. Literally. Mm-hmm. And I mean, China is such a huge growth market for the NBA because, first of all, there's 1.4 billion people. Secondly, almost all of them love basketball. So there's the problem for the NBA. They've got this huge market, and the Chinese love the NBA, so long as you don't say word one against them. Mm -hmm. Well, and don't be a 76ers fan in China, because those games are blacked out because that's too patriotic (laughs) pro-America. Unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. And then they jump in our faces at the first chance they get to try to bring about gun control. Okay, thank you. Thanks for participating. Uh, also, Whoopi Goldberg yesterday. Uh, she wasn't. She wasn't done with the uh, abortion gun comparison in the Constitution. She also wants to punch people if uh, anybody says anything about thoughts and prayers. So that's the question. So that's the question. What are we doing? Because we're we're. Why are we always at square one with this? And I swear to God, right. if I see another Republican senator talk about their heart being broken, I'm gonna go and, punch somebody. And kind of thoughts. And I, I can't take it in their thoughts and prayers. Yeah. If your thoughts and prayers were really with well, everybody, you'd have done prayers. something by now. Yeah. It's not like anybody's not trying Good to gosh. make this happen. What the hell is going on? I want them to stop gaslighting me also. Stop saying it's not it's not guns that kill people, it's people that kill people. It's guns that kill people. Okay? Stop yeah, saying they just the go opposite. around on their own. Stop saying that mental illness is behind this. Oh, There's gosh. mental illness in every country <laughs> in the world and they don't have this problem. This so is their new talking point if you don't understand. Yep. And stop saying that you can have a good guy stop a bad guy with a gun. We have seen uh. in both of these shootings in the past three weeks yeah. that a good guy tried and could not do and it. Was so for. stop gaslighting us. Mm. Mm. <sighs> These are hideous women. Oh my gosh. Evil. It just oozes out of them. Just spilling out their ears while they speak. You know, somebody, a, a good guy did stop this. A, a lot more than 19. He had way more ammo. He could have gone class to class. This all happened in one classroom and they killed him in that classroom. Had he gone down the hall and shot more people, we would have had a much bigger catastrophe on our hands. So a person with a gun did stop this. Yes, it would have been nice if they would have stopped it 21 people earlier. But at least it wasn't 41 or 101. Unbelievable. Uh, still some questions there, too. Uh, I, Man, I guess, you know, he encountered... Uh, a resource officer outside the school, yeah. apparently. Yeah, and the resource officer uh, was shot, apparently. Yeah. Injured slightly. And in he went. That's when he went inside. And the door wasn't locked. And I, I don't know why a back door wasn't locked. It's still bothering <clears throat> me. Yeah, very, very strange. Because I thought we got... I, I thought that was pretty universal, that schools were going to lock up while the kids are in there. But Yeah, and, and this... When... Uh, when Marjorie Stoneman Douglas happened, right? Um, mm-hmm. The the left was, and I'm sure there's a montage being made right now out there. The left was talking about we've got to secure our schools, we've got to put money into the schools. Yeah. And, and today, and then and they said the same thing about healthcare or uh, mental health. Mm. They said we've got to help people out. They're struggling. Well, how is it that we're four years later? And it's like that doesn't even matter anymore. No, no, securing our making them fortresses isn't the way to go. My gosh, that's all you wanted a school to be four years ago, and mm. now it's like no, that's not the answer. And either is mental health. It's the guns. I think they realized they were getting traction on those other issues. And they're like, whoa, 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 we're not going to fortify the schools and go after mental health. Yeah, they're it's not the for that. It's the guns. Now. Remember, y'all, the guns, because the guns go up by themselves and just start shooting people. That's so asinine. It's just brainless. Yeah. mindless and they've all obviously gotten together on some talking point that all countries have mental issues now all countries have mental health problems but they don't have this and we got the pope uh interjecting himself into oh. america's uh political issues again good now he i to my knowledge he has not mentioned the supreme court decision on abortion at all but he mentions everything else He called for more gun control in the United States after the shooting. He spoke about the shooting from St. Peter's Square at the Vatican. 
uh, during his weekly general audience. He said, I'm praying for the children and adults who were killed and for their families. It's time to say enough to the indiscriminate trafficking of arms. Let us all make a commitment so that trage- tragedies like this cannot happen again. Mm. Uh, then a car- the Archbishop of Chicago agreed the size of this crisis and its sheer horror make it all too easy to toss up one's hands and declare nothing can be done. But that's the council of despair and we are a people of hope. What do we hope for our children? The Second Amendment did not come down from Sinai. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Kind of did, really. It really kind of did, as a matter of fact. Uh, because... I believe strongly, and many people do, that the U.S. Constitution was divinely inspired. And that means the Second Amendment was divinely inspired. And the thing is, this, this is a problem that's it's not going to be fixed with gun control. We all know that. It's not going to be fixed with mental health checkups. America's problem is we've turned away from God. We've always had the Second Amendment. We've always had mental illness issues, to use their talking point. What we used to have is the American covenant with God. Then what happened? In 1963, for instance, the Supreme Court stopped prayer in school. And since that time, have things gotten better or worse? They've gotten much worse in nearly every single way imaginable. George Washington made the original covenant uh, with God, telling him, we will be your people and you will be our God. And Abraham Lincoln reestablished that covenant and ended the evil of slavery. Now, what's happened since is that, as I said, we've turned our back on him now. And I think the only way to fix this problem, and all others that we face for that matter, is to openly turn back to God and to be his people and let him be our God again. Because this flailing around and, and trying to uh, jam a square peg into a round hole just isn't going to work. This, this problem is much deeper than just, all right, we take away the guns. Uh, all right, we, we put people in mental institutions. No, we've, we've got some rot going on in our souls. And that rot needs to be lanced out of our bodies. And the way to do that is to turn our faces back to God. But they don't want to hear that. No, they they don't want to hear that at all. You'll be mocked immediately. Like it's not even, it's not even a conversation they're willing to have. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, they mock the, I'm going to pray for the families. They yeah. mock that relentlessly now. Just openly mock that. You had a congressman, a sitting congressman, tweet out, F your prayers. My gosh. That's just incredible, isn't it? It's amazing. Would that have happened, I don't know, 10 years ago? And eh, maybe. I, I don't know. Did they say that after Sandy Hook? Because that was 10 years ago. It's amazing how far we've come. Uh, in such a short amount of time that you can't even recognize the country anymore. We can't even recognize genders anymore. Something that's eternal and comes from God. Did he make all of these mistakes? Incredible. It's just incredible what we're doing to ourselves. So maybe we better take a stronger look inside ourselves and uh, see what we can do that way rather than flail around with all of these alternate solutions. And I guarantee if they take the guns, that is not going to stop the problem. That's going to make it worse. Because then only only the criminals will have access to them. Yeah. We yeah. won't. Yeah. We have a uh, picture that is going to be painted for us in a nice little three-minute rant about what America will look like without guns. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Coming up on Pat Gray Unleashed. On the Blaze Radio Network. The Steve 42 tweets. I'm old enough to remember when Steve Kerr said he didn't have enough information to condemn China. Oh. <laughs> yes. Nice. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. 
But he's got plenty of information on all these shootings. He knows exactly what's going on. Plus, he has information on why the GOP senators won't do gun control. He knows what's in their heart. Mm -hmm. He knows that it's only power they seek. Huh. Pretty amazing. I've never wanted the Mavericks to win a series so badly in my life. Too bad they're down 3-1. Yeah, yeah. Old man Brandon, uh, The View is a mental institution. Why people listen to those idiots is a puzzler. Scruffy Nerf Herder tweets, Can you expect a spiritual problem to be solved by a secular solution? America has a massive God-shaped hole in its soul. Sure does. Uh, Jimmy Dimples, Pat smacked it out of the park. America needs God desperately. If our hearts were right, we could walk around with bazookas and it wouldn't be an issue. Right, because no one would use them to kill another person uh, without provocation. I mean, like, uh, you know, saving somebody's life or defending yourself. And that's true. It's absolutely right. But we don't want to touch that one with a six-foot pole. Uh, We can't go down that road. Nobody wants to talk about that. The tone-deaf narcissist uh, Barack Obama tweeted this out (laughs) yesterday. He's so great, isn't he? He is a winner. It's always about him. Yep. As we grieve the children of Uvalde today, we should take time to recognize that two years have passed since the murder of George Floyd under the knee of a police officer. Mm. Really? Is this an appropriate time to bring this up? Boy, he sucks. That is unbelievable. His killing stays with us all to this day, especially those who loved him. Wait, you loved George Floyd? What? (laughs) He didn't even, he didn't know George Floyd. Barack phony ass Obama. That's exactly. Right. That's right. Yeah. Sorry, the tragedies you like to exploit didn't line up better on your calendar, Barry. Yeah, oh my gosh, so just inappropriate. You just you don't have to. Mm. If that was Trump bringing up something else that happened two years ago to make a point on that day, how do you think people would respond? They'd be all over him. It would lead the news. Got this tweet from Greg Price, summing things up. The left's reaction to uh, gun crime. Last year, there were more children under 18 shot in Chicago alone than died of COVID-19 nationwide. Mm -hmm. In that age group, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Children in cities with strict gun control laws were some of the biggest victims of the 2020-2021 crime wave. And no one on the left cared. No. Because it didn't fit their narrative. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I do like the tweet from Abby Libby. I don't think the anti-gun people are ready to hear what Ukraine spent that $40 billion on. (laughs) Yeah. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. That's for sure. And they love that. Mm -hmm. They're perfectly fine with that. Nobody on the left has a problem with sending all these weapons to Iraq. And you know what these weapons do? They kill people. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, do I, did I say Iraq? I just did the George W. Bush yeah, slip up. Yeah, that's right. That's At right. least I'm not responsible for Iraq, so it's not quite as and, and bad think of this. Me. Think of this. <laughs> the majority of guns owned in America are owned by lawful, responsible gun owners. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. These guns to Ukraine, our government has admitted, we have no idea what's going to happen to them when they're there. They, these they don't know. These guns could be, if there's, if there's a way to trace them, you could end up tracing them to... Who knows what kind of crimes yeah. in the future? Yeah. I mean, we saw where the Fast and Furious guns ended up. They ended up killing a border agent, <sighs> and they ended up being associated with the uh, Paris nightclub shooting. Right. You don't know where these guns are going to go. If you really care about tracking guns, leftist, then start holding the government, your government accountable for what they're just sending over there to Ukraine right now in mass. Yeah. <sighs> and, you know, a lot of these weapons, again, uh, a lot of these weapons actually kill people. That's their only purpose, is killing people. I thought that was a big issue with you. So that's why AR-15s are so horrible, because they only kill people. Hmm. You think a Glock doesn't kill people just as quickly? Or just you're, you're not just as dead with a Glock as with a, an AR-15? <sighs> so asinine. And we're sending them lethal weapons over there. They're going to be killing some people with these things. And you're apparently okay with that. Pat Head Garcia, uh, Garcia Maga sent us this brilliant meme <laughs> using the left's gun control argument against him. Mm-hmm. Calm down, liberals. No one's coming for your abortions. 
We just want common sense abortion control. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, it gets better. <laughs> Mandatory background checks complete with mental health evaluation must be placed in a national abortion registry. $200 tax stamp and a one-year wait period. Outlaw assault abortions after the first trimester and limit the number you can have. No one needs more than one abortion. <laughs> I love this. That's brilliant. fantastic. I love it. Yep. Common sense abortion control. <sighs> We're going to keep that one in frame it. That's awesome. <laughs> that is really good. Uh-huh. Uh, Mark Robinson, the lieutenant governor of North Carolina. Remember him? Mm-hmm. Um, before that, he was just a guy making sense at city council meetings. Well, here he is a few years ago discussing guns. I've heard a whole lot of people in here talking tonight about this group and that group, and domestic violence and blacks, these minorities and that minority. What I want to know is... When are you all going to start standing up for the majority? And here's who the majority is. I'm the majority. I'm a law-abiding citizen who's never shot anybody, never committed a serious crime, never committed a felony. I've never done anything like that. But it seems like every time we have one of these shootings, nobody wants to blame, put the blame where it goes, which is at the shooter's feet. You want to put it at my feet. You want to turn around and restrict my right constitutional right that's spelled out in black and white. You want to restrict my right to buy a firearm and protect myself from some of the very people you're talking about in here tonight. It's ridiculous. I don't think Rod Serling could come up with a better script. It does not make any sense. The law-abiding citizens of this community and many communities around this country, we're the first ones taxed and the last ones considered, and the first ones punished when things like this happens, because our rights are the ones that are being taken away. That's the reason why I came down here today, gun show or no gun show, NRA or no NRA. I'm here to stand up for the law-abiding citizens of this community, because I'm going to tell you that what's going to happen. You can take the guns away from us all you want to. You all write a law, I follow the law, I'll bring my guns down here, I'll turn them in. But here's what's going to happen. The Crips and the Bloods on the other side of town, they're not going to turn their guns in. They're going to hold on to them. And what's going to happen when you have to send the police down there to go take them? The police can barely enforce the law as it is. As what I see, we demonize the police, criminalize and, and, and vilify the police, and we make the criminals into victims. And we're talking about restricting guns? How are you going to do that? How are you going to do that when the police department's already hamstrung? You're not going to be able to go down here and take these guns from these criminals. So the criminals are going to hold on to their guns. They're still going to have them. They're still going to break in my house, and they're still going to shoot me with them. And guess who's going to be the one that suffers? It's going to be me. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, it is not going to happen without a fight. And when I say fight, I don't mean shots fired. I don't mean fist thrown. I mean, I'm going to come down here to this city council and raise hell just like these loonies from the left do until you listen to the majority of the people in this city. And I am the majority. The majority of the people in this city are law-abiding. And they follow the law. And they want their constitutional right to be able to bear, to bear arms. They want to be able to gun sh- go to the gun show and buy a hunting rifle or sport, a sport rifle. There are no military-grade weapons sold, sold, uh, sold at the uh, gun show. An AR-15 is not a military-grade weapon. Anybody that would go into combat with an AR-15 is a fool. <laughs> it's a semi-automatic 22 rifle. You'd be killed in 15 minutes in combat <laughs> with that thing. So we need to dispel all Great. these myths, and we need to drop all this, all this division that we got going on here. Because the bottom line is, when that Second Amendment was written, whether the framers liked it or not, they wrote it for everybody. And I am everybody. And the law abiding citizens of this city are everybody. And we want our rights, and we want to keep our rights. And by God, we're going to keep them. Come hell or high water. Nice. Okay. North Carolina went on to make that man their lieutenant governor. That was a good move by them. Mm-hmm. That was a smart decision. You on board with DeSantis Robinson? 2024? Uh, big time. Yeah. All right. Yay. Let's big time. Start that push. That guy uh, made so much sense just right off the top of his head. He wasn't didn't look like he was reading anything. No. 
He just uh, <laughs> he knew what he wanted to say, and, yeah. and he let him have it. And it was all really common sense stuff. Mm-hmm. Speaking of common sense. Brilliant we, in its simplicity. It, it really was. Uh, we got to get to uh, Common Sense Kamala. Common Sense Kamala. All mm-hmm. right. Nice nickname. I mm-hmm. like it. Because uh-huh. <laughs> oh. she's, you know. She's good. Terrific. Uh, here she was talking about a former uh, Senate colleague of hers. Mm. As a United States Senator, <clears throat> I, together with Senator Cory Book, Congresswoman Karen Bass. I'm sorry, who? Introduced legislation mm-hmm. to advance much needed reforms. Cory Book. United States Senator. Yeah, you know him. Yeah, yeah. Corey. I, together with Senator Cory Book, Congresswoman <laughs> Karen Bass. <laughs> You don't even know his name. Wow, she had a little Biden moment there. That is a Biden and I, moment. And it seemed like the way Biden looked up, it seemed like even he caught it. Like, hey. Like, hey. Who's Come new? on, man. His name is Cory Booker. It's not Cory Book. Is it time for pudding yet? I don't want to listen to her anymore. <laughs> that quote is pudding? almost believable that Rob just put up there what? from Kamala. <laughs> Monkeypox is a disease. It makes you sick. When you're sick, you say, a chew. Monkeys eat bananas. <laughs> that seriously. I think that's eat, a real quote from her. That yeah. could easily be. I think she said that yesterday after. After Cory Book. Cory Book. Yeah. So good. Cory Book. It's great. It's not even that hard of a name. No, it's, it's not. And I mean, how long was she in the Senate with him? Quite a while. Yeah. Actually, quite some time. <sighs> and uh, she apparently forgot his name. <laughs> How quickly they forget, mm. I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever. Mm. Uh, Democrat representative, someone I'd like to forget, mm. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Ugh, what's she doing? Uh, suggested that Republican representative Lauren Boebert of Colorado should quit Congress. Uh, Boebert tweeted Wednesday, you cannot legislate away evil. That's right. That's why we need to turn to God. Her tweet came in the wake of the deadly mass shooting, of course. So Ocasio-Cortez tweeted, Why even be in Congress if you don't believe in doing your job? Just quit and let someone who actually gives a damn do it instead of acting like a useless piece of furniture when babies are shot with AR-15s that we let teen boys impulse buy before they can legally have a beer. Right. Uh, She's concerned about the babies being shot because apparently it's so much better to tear babies into pieces and then suck out their body parts from the womb. Maybe you should shut your stupid trap when it comes to protecting babies because you're all about killing them. I mean, if it were up to these people in the psychotic death cult called the Democrat Party, there wouldn't be any babies. I, I, they have no self-awareness at all. For her to use the word babies when they're so into abortion, right up to birth, nobody's more extreme than Ocasio-Cortez on the issue. And then you're going to talk about protecting babies? <sighs> Shut up. Just gut check. Stop. Stop. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I love people like AOC who say, <sighs> you know, you can't trust these kids to... You know, blah, blah, blah. But yet, if they want to change their sex at age eight, oh, oh, yeah. We're totally good with that. What? Of course. Right. <laughs> right. Talk about irreversible damage. I'd like to, if we're talking about Lauren Boebert and guns, I'd like to point out that she had <laughs> uh, said she was going to take a firearm into Congress, right? Yeah, because she had threats or something, didn't right. she? Well, that, that was day one. Yeah. And then, like, a day or two later, January 6th happens where the left wants us to believe that was the biggest threat to democracy in the history of the planet. Right. And wouldn't you want somebody inside to fend off that attack if that was the case? Wouldn't you think so? Yeah. Whatever. I mean, yeah. there's no consistent. Why do we even waste our time trying to be consistent here with them? Well, and they're radically opposed to arming police officers inside schools, keeping an armed guard in a school at all times. They're, uh, no, we don't want more guns. We want less. Well, why? What What are you talking about? You don't want somebody in there who can defend these kids against an active shooting? Wait, wait, Come wait, on. Uh, wait a minute. They are, this Congress is behind fencing, barbed wire, 
concrete pylons, armed guards, mm-hmm. but it's not good enough for your kids. But, oh my gosh, to protect them, oh, then that's totally cool. I swear I can't. Because they don't really care. <laughs> no. They don't really want a solution. All they want is an end to the Second Amendment. That's what they want. Mm-hmm. And they use each and every one of these shootings as a vehicle to try to get there. So far, the American people have been able to fend this off over and over and over again. We have to fight off this attempt at taking our guns. And by the way, again, uh, I wish I still had some for you to take from me, but I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't. I used to have two guns. I don't have a massive arsenal. I just have two. Mm-hmm. Well, I used to. And then I took them on a boating trip in, in that body of water. Why would you risk that, though? That I don't know. I, I was afraid that there might be uh, sharks. You poor know? planning, Pat. Yeah. Come on now. And so the the boat tipped over and down went the guns and they're at the bottom of that big body of water. Yeah, yeah. And well, sadly, I've, I've forgotten which body of water uh, it is. Wow. But it's a big one. It's an ocean or a lake or Are you drinking? something that's sizable. You don't even drink. Uh, no, I don't. I was tired, though, that day. Oh, so. you're really tired? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I will say that uh, I was on board with everything uh, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson said in his speech there. Uh, except for the part where I go and turn, turn in the guns. Turn in my guns. Nope, not doing that. Nah, you can come and uh, take them from me or try. You pry them from my cold, dead fingers. That's effectively what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, mm-hmm. I will not be turning in my guns. You can pass all the laws. You no, want. absolutely not. And because I, I don't have alone. any to turn in, e- even so, that's the problem. See, thing is, really. I haven't lost mine. You haven't. I have not. Okay. And uh-huh. I want the huh. government to know that. <laughs> okay. I still have mine. <laughs> and I know how to use them. Oh, boy. Hopefully that will not become necessary. Yeah, hopefully not. But you know what? But the trajectory we're on right now it's bad. kind yeah. of feels like we're headed that way. It's bad. I pray to God we aren't, though. 888 900 More Pack Gray Unleashed. Coming up. Uh, Thomas Massey, really great congressman, uh, is trying to get clemency for a guy named... Uh, Ross William Ulbricht, who created and operated the Darknet Market website, Silk Road, from 2011 until his arrest in 2013. The site was used for anonymity and Bitcoin as a currency and facilitated the sale of narcotics and other illegal sales. Mm. One of Ulbricht's online pseudonyms was Dread Pirate Roberts. Nice! From The Princess Bride, of course. (laughs) I am the Dread Pirate Roberts. Uh, there will be no survivors. In February 2015, Ulbricht was convicted of conspiracy to commit money laundering, conspiracy to commit computer hacking, conspiracy to traffic fraudulent identity documents, and conspiracy to traffic narcotics by means of the internet. Mm-hmm. So then in May of 2015, he was sentenced to get this, a double life sentence plus 40 years without the possibility of parole. Unbelievable. So after he dies from his first life, then they put him back in prison for his next life. Right. And when he dies even deader, then he gets another 40 years. You got it. Right? Yep. Exactly. And there's no chance of parole. (laughs) Now, some might say that's a tad bit harsh, hmm. given the the crime that he committed. And keep in mind... It wasn't violent. Right. It not only was it not violent, but he just provided the marketplace for this these transactions. Right. I, is, this is... Oh, this man is Jeez. being made an example. Don't you step out of line. Don't you try to uh, get around the system. You will play our game by our rules within our field. And, oh, gosh... He appealed to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit in 2017 and the U.S. Supreme Court in 2018 and was unsuccessful both times. He's currently incarcerated at the United States Penitentiary in Tucson. And Thomas Massey is saying, okay, you know, enough. Can we maybe get him released? Is there any way Joe Biden will do that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Wow, that what 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 did this guy? Why is it so harsh? Yeah, here's Massey asking for that clemency. All right, and I I just like to use uh, my remaining time to talk about one case, case of Ross Ulbrich. 
Uh, he was a young, peaceful, first-time offender serving a double life first prison plus 40 offender. years. The guy has been condemned to rot in prison for setting up a mm. website <laughs> called Silk Road. And there were people mm -hmm. selling drugs on there, and, and he probably mm -hmm. knew that was happening. Uh, but the people who were selling drugs on there who got convicted are already out of prison. Wow. Oh, my gosh. And the guy who set up the website when he was 26 years old is now 10 years later. Oh, this this fall, he will uh, it will be the 10th anniversary of his time in prison. He was an Eagle Scout. He doesn't mm. he doesn't claim that he was innocent. He, he knows now that it was a crime. He's asking for clemency. He's asking for his sentence to be commuted. And, uh, you know, he's got a college degree. He could be a productive member of society. And so I would like, hopefully, the executive branch to look at this case. But, hmm. uh, Madam Chairwoman, I would like to submit, for the record, a summary of Ross Ulbricht's case uh, from freeross.org and remind people that Ross was never prosecuted for causing harm or bodily injury, and no victim was named at his trial. Mm. Wow. Nice unanimous consent to submit these two pages from that site. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time. Huh. Wow. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a stiff penalty. I mean, murderers sometimes don't get that kind of penalty. Without the possibility of parole? Jeez, they, let, they just let what's-his-face go? Uh, Hinkley. John Hinckley. <laughs> He's out of prison. He almost killed... An American president. Yeah, it's, it's done enough time. It's 40-some years. Let him go. Oh, all right. But this guy who set up a website, as Massey just mentioned, yes, illegal things happened on that website. But, wow, that is a stiff penalty. No way you can get parole. It's just a life sentence, period. Sorry, you're going to be in jail the rest of your life. And he was only 26 when he went in. I mean, this... This is mm. an example. The the federal government is making an example. Where's Kim Kardashian on this? Oh. Where is she? Yeah. Huh. huh. Yeah. Um, another thing that stood out there, other than the injustice there for Mr. Ulbricht, was, did you hear the uh, chairwoman's voice? You recognize that voice? I, oh, was it uh, Maxine Waters? No, that was Sheila Jackson Lee. Sheila Jackson. Okay. Sheila Jackson Lee is the chair oh, of boy. the Judiciary Subcommittee. <laughs> That's embarrassing. That is another embarrassment the for the United States that, of America. Yeah, in really. That clip. Really. Ugh. Jeez. Uh, all right. Just to show you how um, screwed up we continue to be, uh, Laverne Cox has just made history as Mattel's first ever transgender Barbie. Mm -hmm. About how time, right? Wonderful. About time. Now, how do you know she's transgender? Are they anatomically correct? Oh my goodness! These Are, new Barbies. Oh no. Oh no, when you lift up the dress. Oh no. Do you no. see something going on there or what? Wait, wait, you don't even mm. see that with Ken. No, you no you do not. I bet you do with these. He's smooth. Uh so smooth. <laughs> Maybe he was the first tra <gasps> Ken Maybe. was trans. Maybe. Barbie, who are you hanging with? Wow. Le <sighs> What's this doll's name again? I let's find out here. Uh, Laverne Cox. Laverne. Well, that's the name of the inspiration, I guess, for the doll. I don't know if they're calling the doll that. Okay. Following the exciting announcement, the 49-year-old performer could barely contain her excitement as she raved about a doll being made in her uh, life lifelessness. Lifeless. <laughs> that's, no that's way. What the, yeah, that's what oh the article gosh. says. What is it with these stories? I can't wait for fans to find my doll on shelves and have the opportunity to add a Barbie doll modeled after a transgender person to their collection. The kids are. Can we leave the kids out of this yeah, garbage, they're, they're, please? They're, Can we please, by all that is holy, you got no chance. Leave the kids out of it, but they won't. They're not. The doll Laverne Cox has made history while speaking about history as Mattel's first transgender Barbie. Uh, the orange is the new black actress. Oh, okay. I didn't. Okay, so I'm not. So you and I don't don't watch. I'm it. not into. It's a big guy show. <laughs> Only fat guys can watch it. Right. Orange is the new black. Okay, mm. that's what uh, this person's in. Mm. The, are her? Is bro, it bro, she? Her? Bro, I don't. Know. Is it she? Her? I don't know. I don't know. That's the pronouns they're using here. So, additionally, the inventing Anna actress. So she's also, I guess, been in 
yeah. inventing Anna. I've not heard that one at all. Explain to people how the doll is a major win for the LGBTQIA2 plus community and amid disturbing proliferation of anti-trans bills. Right. Oh, okay. She went on to describe how this is a bit of hope and possibility for trans people in a year where over 250 pieces of anti-trans legislation have been introduced in state legislatures all across the country. Anti. They're not anti-trans. They're pro-women. It is not anti-trans to say that men can't compete against women in sports. And those are the laws that are being enacted in some places. Well, what if you want to groom a kid in school? That sounds like... No, a, you can't do that either. No. But that sounds anti-trans. Yeah, and it's not. Don't say gay. It's that's not. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah, that's not what it yeah, is. I'm, I, you I, can say gay. I feel like a creep uh, Googling, uh, is the doll anatomically correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not uh, finding out. So... Uh, yeah, there's... The uh, answer isn't being shared. No, no. So I don't readily. know. If you okay. lift up the old dress on the Barbie doll, I don't know. It might be a surprise waiting for you. And it doesn't end with Mattel. Of course, Disney's gay pride collection clothing line uh, is made in anti-LGBTQ China. Oh, this is kind of like so the hypocrisy of the NBA. Right. Yes. And Disney participating in this whole thing, too. Uh, why? Why? Well, okay. That's a long answer. <sighs> continues to regard homosexuality in China. China continues to regard homosexuality as a mental disorder and recently announced a crackdown on sissy men in entertainment. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Quote, sissy men in entertainment? Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, I remember that story about a year ago or so. Okay. Disney's pride collection includes apparel with Made in China labels according to items obtained by Breitbart. At least one of those items is made from 100% cotton, which may have been sourced from slave labor regions in China, though that remains unclear. (laughs) But we're not even dealing with the fact that they're doing, you know, a gay clothing line for kids. So China overtly anti-gay. Yeah. China um, has no problem with slave labor. Right. Right. All those are coming together in this story, and Disney is like, yep, we're buying mm-hmm. this clothing from China. What's mm-hmm. your problem? You know what the real problem is? Is Disney talking? It's in Florida. They don't want to teach kids about sex. That's the real problem. Uh-huh. And it's you bigoted parents who don't want your kids being groomed. <laughs> the company, which did not respond to requests for comment, <laughs> kicked off the apparel line this month, saying it would donate all profits through June 30th to groups that support LGBT. QQIA2 plus youth and families. That's beautiful. Their pride merchandise is geared for both children and adults and features rainbow themed motifs imposed on familiar Disney brands, including Star Wars, Marvel, and Pixar. Okay. Um, now, you remember yesterday, though, we had the, uh, wow. there was a house, we had a story that painted the rainbow colors on the side of the yeah, house. Yeah, but not enough. Yeah. Not enough rainbow colors. Because they, they didn't update their flag. Mm-hmm. But I don't know which flag you would go by because uh, somebody sent us this chart. Mm. It's a very helpful chart, but I'm a little confused. Can we see it? Um, Ian Miles Chong sent us this new chart about the asexual spectrum. Uh, didn't know there was an entire spectrum look of these, but look at, look at how many there are. <laughs> and, and see, oh if God. you pick one of these flags over the mm-hmm. others, then you're not being inclusive of the other flags. So your house should actually rotate these colors. Or put them all up at the same time somewhere. This is... Okay, because you need to have them all. You know what you're looking at? You're you're looking at the spectrum of mental illness. If mental illness was represented in flags, there you go. Because what... I don't have Mm. that chart in front of me. What what is uh, some of these... We've got asexual. Okay. (laughs) Ace-spec. I mean, look at... Black stripe asexual. Black stripe asexual. What never heard of that. that I've never heard of that. Uh-huh. I got to tear it from this so I can okay. get some light on it. Uh-huh. See it better. Okay. Uh, then there's, jeez, uh, agasexual. Sure. There's we'll go with gay that. sexual. Gay sexual. I thought that's just gay. Why don't? I don't understand why we're requisexual. Requisexual. I have never heard of many of these. Nobody has. Apothesexual. Don't know that. 
Uh, they're just making stuff up. Yeah, now. they this are. This is absolutely incredible. Yep. Uh, I wish we could enlarge that because th- this is fascinating. I'm looking for it. Hang on. Uh, wow. Biculosexual. Here we go. Freyosexual. Freyosexual. Autosexual. <laughs> Coeosexual. Okay. Mallsexual. Mall sexual. Is that where you have sex in malls? I don't know. M-O-L-L. What is that? It's M O L L. Oh, M O L L. Ace flexible. Okay, bookmark that one. Uh, let's see. We got uh, copiosexual, cade sexual, demisexual, mm. procule sexual. Reciproca- uh, reciprocal. <laughs> Re- so you reciprocate the sex that you just had. You Wait, once they I- know that the person is attracted to them. Oh, see, that's got rules. That one's got rules. Okay. <laughs> Lithosexual, and it vanishes, it says. Or causes discomfort when reciprocal. What is happening? Orchid sexual? I'm not even gonna wow. pursue that one. Allosexual? Okay, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Ace jump? Seriously, do we have to? We, we got to learn all this now, I guess. Oh, I got and provide all those flags. Good luck, Disney. We, Good luck on that one. Where in hell? Um, this is what I was saying. Okay, this our. Our civilization is completely out of control. We have gone so far afield uh, from anything spiritual that it's... I mean, we're into this. We're into this. At some point, don't even... You know, the those who are gay say, okay, this is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Stop it. And they are. Stop it. I think, yes, there are many... You know, normal gay people who are just like, okay, Mm -hmm. you're hurting this now. You're hurting us. This is causing a problem. Stop it. And don't forget, uh, this year's New York City Pride Parade, your grand marshals, um, gay men not invited. Oh. Gay men aren't a part of this. Of of the gay pride parade? Of the uh, the grand marshals. There's trans. There's like one lesbian and three... So even the gay men now are not cool enough not, to be part of this new thing that's precisely. going on. Yep. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, it's mm. it's madness, and it is, wow. and it is these twenty five flags that we just went through. It is the the acceptance of mm. this mental illness mm-hmm. that leads to things like mass shootings, in my opinion, because you are mainstreaming this stuff. You're not trying to get them help. Instead, you're embracing them, saying, yes, no, this is so good. Yeah, totally. Well, and, yeah. and Trans then, was just considered, how was it, five years ago, seven years ago? It's been within the last 10 years that the AMA considered, uh, you know, it, the trans situation to be a mental illness. And, yeah. and something that had to be dealt with right. and treated. And then you mix in the horrible lockdowns. And isolating people from society over the last two years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just going to end up, it's going to get worse. And now it's not only not considered a mental illness, it's considered uh, really a preferable lifestyle. It's really good if you want to switch your gender. That's a a great thing. Please do. Please do. And encourage your children to do it too, because it's it's fun and it's it's right. And uh, I think you're going to be happier afterwards. I was at a business yesterday and there was a sign hanging there in the lobby that said we will get through this together and i think they put that up uh you know at the beginning of COVID or something and it's like nah i'm not feeling that <laughs> i don't know it doesn't it, it doesn't feel that it's way it's right comedy now, no. hour here yeah. at the old oil change place yeah. <laughs> we will get through this together no we're not getting through anything together yeah, okay Mm-mm. uh all right let me tell you about real estate agents i trust because trying to sell your home You know what kind of challenge that can be. If you've ever done it, you don't want to do it again, but you have to sometimes. And uh, and sometimes you're relocating and you have to both sell a home and then buy a new one. Well, that's why you need a real estate agent who's going to come in and take charge of the situation and decipher whether or not you need your house to be painted, the inside, the outside, um, need to replace stairs in the backyard or the countertops in your kitchen. I mean, all of these things are big decisions and cost a lot of money. And you need a realtor who's, who's going to be able to counsel you on whether or not you're going to get your money out of those changes. That's the kind of service you're looking for in a real estate agent. And that's the kind of service you get in real estate agents I trust. 
Same goes for buying a home. When you choose your agent through Real Estate Agents I Trust, you partner yourself with a competitive winning machine. And it's a team of people that's going to see it through to the end with you. Real Estate Agents I Trust. The name says it all. Realestateagentsitrust.com. We are a democracy. The democracy. 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 We're democracy. We're democracy. I wonder what Pat Gray thinks about that. We're not a democracy. Now back to Pat Gray Unleashed on the Blaze. Got some tweets here. Benjamin Flensburg tweets, it's not just an American problem. It's all across the West. Leftism has seeped in everywhere. And with it comes despair, division, rootlessness, and lack of purpose. Leftism's long march through society is finally paying dividends. Uh, yes, yes, uh, that's true. Microaggressor, it's amazing. Yesterday, not even 24 hours after the tragedy, I was seeing commercials on YouTube on how horrifying Sandy Hook was and vote blue. Weird. Uh, Kara3022. Oh, can we please have Mark Robinson go on The View to debate and educate the coven? The coven? <laughs> Such a great name oh, we gotta for do those this. hags. we got to start doing that. A witch's coven. No. So great. The coven. <laughs> Gordy Tatman. We've lost the original intent of liberty, not the, not the freedom to do whatever you want to do, but the responsibility to do what you ought. Yeah. Um, yes. And, you know, it's also different with us than it is other countries. And that's what Democrats are on on these talking points right now. Of What's the difference between the rest of the world and us? And we- mental illness. Everybody's got mental illness. We, we don't stand out with mental illness. We are uh, a different land here. We're on a land of promise. This was a promised land, and uh, we've got certain promises as long as we're a righteous and a moral people, and we're not that right now. We're just not that. So we're missing out on blessings that we could otherwise be receiving and protection from situations like we had this week in in Uvalde. And uh, I, I I don't know that we're capable of turning it around. I hope we are. I hope we still are. But, man, it doesn't look like it. It looks like we're going the exact opposite direction from where we need to go. Yeah, this isn't a political fix. No, it's not. It's not a political fix. And it's not a mental issue fix either. Although there's a lot of mental problems. Uh, but as they keep pointing out, there's problem. There's mental problems everywhere. Right. But we're different because we made a covenant with God, and we're not keeping that covenant. And so that's going to be a problem. It's not a matter of uh, whether God's on our side or not. It's whether we're on his side. And that's where we need to be. If we're on his side, these things will take care of themselves. Yeah, and and if you're talking with someone in your life that, that won't even go down the God road with you as far as where our rights come from mm-hmm. and the purpose of the Constitution to put on paper uh, those guaranteed rights from God, then just then just have the conversation that, well, okay, the government isn't the one providing those rights because if the government is providing those rights, they the can take them, can take them away. Right. So, I mean, there, there is an angle to have this discussion with someone who doesn't necessarily believe in God and isn't a Christian. I mean, you mm-hmm. just, you, you explain to them, mm-hmm. okay, well, the government's not God either. These, right. are, these are natural right. rights that you are guaranteed at birth. Yeah. And the rights come from somewhere. Yeah. You have to choose where that is. You have to decide. Does it come from man? Does it come from government? Or does it come from some other place? Yeah. So if you and your coworker or you and your buddy or you and your family member can't agree that the rights originated with God, then I'm sure you can walk away from the conversation unless they're completely idiotic, in which case they're a lost cause. that could well be. Could very well be. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. just agree that the government isn't the one who creates those rights for you. That's where you start. It would seem like you could be able to uh, to reach that common conclusion, right? That mm-hmm. our rights don't come from government because obviously then government can take them. Is that all right with you? Yeah, then you have to agree with every edict, everything they say because they're yeah. the arbiters of your freedom. And you're continually blowing in the wind as a people. Every which way. 
every change in the government comes another change of your rights. That's not a good way to live. No, the role of government is to protect your rights. Period. 888-900-3393. More Pat Gray Unleashed coming up. Pat Gray is here. Mm -hmm. Got some tweets here, too. Uh, Attack Yuki. Two wise at the beginning and at the end. That's good. Good. Uh, This guy gets a double life plus 40 years for making a website. But a pedophile can ruin the childhood of dozens of children and they get a few years tops. That's how it goes. Vern Lundquist tweets, uh, transgender Barbie? How about one that's shaped like Jeffy or myself? Body type inclusivity, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Okay, well, I mean, there is a limited supply of plastic. (laughs) Point out. Uh, From Carl Smith, has anyone asked Ken how he feels about the new trans Barbie? Right. That's a good question. Yeah, this new Barbie encroaching. You know, you would hope, though, that he's perfectly fine uh, with it, with her, with them, and uh, that he would welcome the new trans Barbie into the family, right, with open arms. You you would hope. Before you know it, <laughs> Barbie is uh, is is uh, having to deal with that relationship too. Right, right. Mm. <laughs> You let another fox into the hen house. There, yeah. Right? Because the trans Barbie is uh, really a biological man. And and we've already, we know what Ken doesn't have mm-hmm. right. down there. Right. So Ken is. Does the trans Barbie have something there? This is going to backfire. This is going to backfire. Ken's going to run away <laughs> with the trans doll and Barbie's going to be left going, hey, whoa, what gives? Wait, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm interested to know. If the trans doll is biologically correct, or is it smooth like Ken is? Ugh. Don't know. I don't know. How do you know it's a trans doll if they're all smooth? The poor Weird. children today. I know. It's just everything ugh, is so agonizing. On them. Uh, from Dale, I keep asking and never get an answer. Why is the L in LGBT, etc., always first? It's sexist and matriarchal. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But that's okay. Sexist. You know, coming from women is fine. And matriarchal is good. Of course, it's the patriarchy that's terrible that we want to avoid at all costs. I see. Yeah. So that's why. I mean, it's fine. Don't even worry about it. Hmm. In fact, if you worry about it, uh, you're sexist and Hmm? patriarchal. what? Uh, The climate crisis could significantly erode the amount of sleep people get each year. (laughs) Oh, they try so hard to get people on board. Yeah. Okay, wait, I'm listening. Wait, sleep? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, By the end of the century, in 2099, we could be losing about 50 to 58 hours of sleep, okay? (laughs) Because climate change, uh, overall, the macro effects will be on the economy. They'll be on social health outcomes and (laughs) extreme weather events. Oh, shut up. (laughs) So 58 hours total. 50 to 58 hours of sleep per person. And could be eroded every year by 2099 because of changing ambient temperatures and suboptimal temperatures sub-optimal. due to the global climate crisis. Okay. Okay. Now, mm-hmm. I have to have a cold room when I'm sleeping. Yeah, me too. Uh, seriously. that So I can't sleep when it's warm. No. So that, that's pretty sneaky how they're trying to say, look. It's uh, going to be hot. So therefore, you mm, can't sleep. You no, I just turn the air conditioner up. Yeah, well, in the year 2099, you're not going to have air conditioning. That's probably in the year 2029. I won't be allowed to have air conditioning. Right, right. Hmm. They said the climate crisis could lead to a host of behavioral, psychological, and physiological outcomes essential to human well-being. Man, they're trying to get us on board with this. Seriously. Scientists said the temperature effect on sleep on sleep loss could be substantially larger for residents from lower-income countries. Of course. As well as in older adults and females. Mm. Huh. Wait, females? They yeah. want it warm when it... I know. We're so the what's ones... the deal there? Uh, I don't know. What's the old line in your household? Burr, I'm cold. Burr, I'm cold. It's cold burr. See? Burr, I'm cold. So they should be sleeping better Yeah. when it's warmer out. On very warm nights, greater than uh, oh. 30 degrees Celsius. <laughs> so that could be 80 below okay. or 1,000 above. I don't know. <laughs> They have in parentheses here, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're trusting that? Just trust that, I guess. Okay. 
So on very warm nights, 86 or above, scientists said sleep declines an average of just over 14 minutes with the likelihood of getting less than seven hours of sleep. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Increasing as temperatures rise. Our bodies are highly adapted to maintain a stable core body temperature, something that our lives depend on, uh, one of the scientists said. Okay, good. So I'm doing the math here. Assuming I live to 2099, which mm -hmm. means I would be... Old. Really, really, I'd be older than Jeffy is now. Yes. Um, You'd be I'm gonna, really old. I'm going to lose seven nights of sleep in my lifetime, or uh. I could just I could just run the temperature, uh, the, the, the air conditioner. Mm -hmm. I'd if sacrifice, they have it. I'd sacrifice that mm -hmm. if I can have climate control. Would you? What a stupid, stupid story. They yeah. are trying everything, man. They sure are. We're throwing everything at the wall they possibly can and just to see what sticks. Mm -hmm. uh, from... Tweet here from only in Boston. The Rose Kennedy Greenway is participating <laughs> in no mo May. No, no mo May. Yeah, no mo May. Don't so mow don't your... mow your lawn right. in May. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm on board. Can my HOA sign off on this? It's a new movement to leave your lawn alone for the month of May and allow lawn flowers to bloom okay, lawn and flowers. feed hungry native bees lawn emerging from hibernation when other flowers are scarce, especially in urban areas. Oh, great. Lawn flowers. That's another word for weeds. Weeds, yes. Yeah. Yeah, weeds. So no mo May. I wish I'd known this before the month started. Yeah, me too. Could have just... I'd love to participate in that. Yeah. Mm. But, uh... I think it's too late now. What about trees? Do we have... Uh, a There's a room? hole in the sky where the tree <laughs> once welcome. was. Somebody's making, making money. Yeah. And what if you what if you had a cow, say, come and eat the grass at the end of No Mo May? Corby? Let me eat! No, no. What do cows produce? Uh, okay. there you go. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're just marking them off now. We're running out of time. <laughs> Uh, we stumbled onto this story from February, which is kind of strange. Why does the U.S. government have 1.4 billion pounds of cheese stored in a cave underneath Springfield, Missouri? That is indeed weird. That is w w so weird. You've heard of government cheese before, um, but this isn't actually money, but actual cheese. <laughs> 1.4 billion pounds of it Un to be exact. Unbelievable. So cheese in a cave go in bad? Missouri. I I don't know. I guess they probably keep it in the cave cuz it's cool and yeah. and dark and dry and started in the 1970s uh during former president Jimmy Carter's era okay. and his promise of giving farmers a break. He wanted to raise the price of milk, but the government couldn't just buy milk and store it, so Started buying as much cheese as people wanted to sell. Always the government <clears throat> screwing stuff up, dude. Incredible. But now farmers were producing way too much cheese. Oh, no. Leading to the ultimate question, what should the government do with all the cheddar? Mm -hmm. To tackle this, former President Ronald Reagan started food assistance programs to distribute 30 million pounds of cheese. Hmm. People talk about food assistance programs as if they were created to help poor people. Uh, yes, that's true, but almost all the major food assistance programs were ideas that came from agriculture because we had too much of something. In the 1990s, the government also started making deals with fast food restaurants to sell the surplus. The National Dairy Promotion Board, a semi-public marketing branch, was also created, which created campaigns like Got Milk, mm. that was big, mm -hmm. and a range of popular fast food menu items. Like Domino's Seven Cheese Pizza or Taco Bell's Very Cheesy Quesalupa. So is all of this cheese coming from the Missouri cave? <laughs> I don't know. I'm Not... waiting for the tie-in still to where... Uh, how how you how did they start storing it in a cave in Missouri? Yeah. The 1.4 billion pounds of cheese still exists in cold storage holdings, but it's no longer completely owned by the government but by private companies. Mm. <clears throat> Precious little cheese is owned by the government. We used to have a program in place where the government would buy some storable dairy products and a very specific kind of style cheese was one of those items. But those programs became completely sidelined back in the 1980s. Problem of overproduced cheese stayed consistent throughout the years with lower dairy consumption. Wow. Oh, I eat 10 times as much cheese as I used to. 
I must be making up for everybody else's uh, <laughs> backing off. Okay. Uh, the government offered again to buy more cheese worth <laughs> $20 million in 2016, but they, they haven't stopped buying it yet. In August of last year, the agency announced the cheese purchase program to buy mozzarella process and natural American cheddar cheese for national school lunch programs and other federal food nutrition assistance programs. I want to tour these. They still don't get into really... No, I'm looking it up, though. The I... point of the article, which was the cave in Springfield, Missouri, where they're storing the cheese. <laughs> weird. That's a, a weird story. It is weird, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I think Mexico has a similar program, Corby. Uh, they have Avocados a... from Mexico. Yeah, that's where they keep them. Nice and cool down there. Here's a... <laughs> I'm trying, man. Uh-huh. Here's the... Here's the inside the cave right there. Look at that. It's just cheese oh. everywhere. This, oh, wow. This is a cave. This isn't a refrigerator. It's a cave, and it's nothing but cheese. And then, <laughs> uh, hold on, we got 57 tabs open. This is the entrance to the cave. Look at it. It says Springfield oh, wow. Underground. And huh. you go down in there, and you see all that cheese. Huh. Just naturally cool. Because you've been in caves before, right? I I have, yes. So, I mean, I figured as much, but it's like a natural refrigerator. Yes. And so it's nice and cool under underground. So I'm not I'm not questioning that it's mm. cold enough in there to keep the cheese fresh. I just would have liked to known before I was 46 years old that I've been eating cheese From all a cave. over the place that's been in a cave. Mm-hmm. Also stored in that cave is the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, they have it uh, back that, there in the way back with the cheese. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. You'd never look for it there, right? No. I probably shouldn't have said anything. I've said too much. I'm You've sorry. said too much. I've said too much. The Ark of the Covenant is in a cave in Missouri? <laughs> yeah, under Springfield, Missouri. Yeah. In a cave of cheese. That's weird, isn't it? That's weird. Good place to hide it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, Nobody's look, we, found it yet. Look, we didn't even know there was cheese there. We <laughs> certainly didn't know Don't the Don't go Ark looking for it. Covenant. If you open it up, it'll burn your face off. That's, so that's not good. That's, that's not, not good. good. That's not good. Uh, let me tell you about Birch Gold. What does our current <clears throat> out-of-control inflation look like? Well, it looks like paying 47% more for fuel than a year ago, 41% more for the same used vehicle if you buy it this year instead of last, and about 10% more to feed your family this year. Looks like every dollar in your savings is worth less than it was a year ago. But you can hedge against the U.S. dollar by investing in something with real value, gold and silver from Birch Gold. In times of inflation, this is the best thing you can do is... Invest in gold. And Birch Gold is the leader in converting IRAs and 401ks into tax-sheltered IRAs backed by gold and silver. With thousands of satisfied customers and and an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau, Birch Gold can help you protect your savings. If you want to find out more about it and consider it, just text PAT to 989-898. Text PAT to 989 to 989-898 to get your free info kit on gold. No obligation. They'll just send you the information and you decide from there. Text Pat to 989-898 to get your free info kit now. It's Pat Gray unleashed on the Blakes. It looks like uh, Tom Brady got a hole in one. Just like uh, (laughs) Donald Trump did a few weeks ago or months ago, whenever that was. Uh-huh. Remember that? Uh-huh. Uh, got a drone shot here of so, well, Tom Brady yeah, hitting. But that's the thing. That's the thing with Donald Trump. He didn't have uh, cameras positioned everywhere, right. and a drone just happened to be flying by. Wow. <clears throat> what a coincidence. Yeah. Let's see it. Three, two, one, swing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. That's looking good. Yeah. That's in the hole. That's it. That's it. I don't think so, Tim. Okay, watch. Here's okay, the ball. Here it goes. Watch. Where's the ball go? It goes out of the screen. Oh, how convenient. Yeah. And then it comes back down. And that, it looks pretty good. And oh, it's in. That trajectory uh, no. changed on that ball, I would like to point out, unless it was a strong headwind. And then that's the shot I want to mm-hmm. see. Huh. <clears throat> So anyway, Tom, uh, Tom Brady, hole in one, everybody. Uh huh. Sure. We will uh, tweet that out so you can decide for yourself if uh, it's not enough that he's the greatest right. quarterback of all right. time, 
and he's still really, really good. And at the top of his game at 45 years old, uh, he also has to hit hole in one, holes in one as well. That's mm, no, sorry, Tom, no, that's CGI. Mm-hmm. Now we, we know that you sold your soul to the devil so you could play until you're 85 years old, <laughs> but I don't know. But, did 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 it also include your? Golf it should game? not. It should not. You now you're just being selfish. Yes. Now you're just being selfish. <laughs> um. This actually did happen, though, last night uh, to oh. Keith's Braves. Oh, yeah. So the Braves and Phillies were playing last night. And mm-hmm. It's a fun play here. Watch this Little League play from the Braves. Well, for this... the Phillies. The oh, Phillies this... are... oh, it's the Phillies. The Phillies are the ones that are screwing up here. Okay. You think I'm going to bring a Braves All right. Yeah, I thought you did. Of but no, to the you table? didn't. No, that All was right. the other night. Let's see what happened. And that one bounced okay. Good secondary okay. lead by Dan uh, Phillies uh, catcher. Okay. Uh, misses it. Uh, misses it. <laughs> The catcher's throw goes almost to the warning track. <laughs> Gets by three Phillies. On a stolen base, they throw it clear to the warning track. <laughs> and nobody can... Look at this again. These are guys yeah. who make millions of dollars a year to do this. <laughs> yeah. This is not down at your at your local it looks Little like, League game. It looks like a Little League it game. It does. Uh, bad I pitch. mean, I've seen this a million times yeah. in Little League. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Whoop, uh. Oh, I missed it. And uh, oh, oh, the center fielder <laughs> missed it. Oh, boy. That was awesome. And <laughs> he scores from first base. Yeah, Marietta, Georgia's <laughs> own Dansby Swanson uh, scores from first on that. That was good stuff right there. That's good stuff. That was fun. Yeah, That's good stuff. Speaking of Philadelphia, uh, <laughs> there's a school district in Philly that has reinstituted, reinstated the mask requirement. <sighs> Terrible. Schools, uh, the school districts of uh, Philadelphia announced that beginning this week, students and staff must once again wear the COVID-19 masks no. in classrooms. It's prompted by a general rise in virus case numbers across the country and especially concentrated in the Northeast. I haven't noticed anything in Texas. I mean, knock on wood. But I, I don't get any sense that it's happening here again. Do you? I mean, I don't know anybody who has COVID nineteen. We went through that, but it has. It's been a while. Mm-hmm. The district made the announcement on Friday, citing the rise in case numbers and a recommendation from the Philadelphia Department of Public Health for universal mask wearing. Masks will be required at all times on school campuses and while traveling to and from schools in buses and vans. That's, I mean, we're just let's torture the kids some more. Bring it back. <sighs> well, we're just following the science, Keith. That's all we're doing. That's right. We're following the science, and the science says that mask wearing does nothing. <laughs> so, seriously, that's what they say. Follow the science. Follow. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, if I do, then I'm not going to wear a mask. Ugh. I can't take it. Yeah. Please don't bring that back to Texas. I, I don't think. I don't think there's any way that would, even if we have a spike here, they're not going to reinstitute mask wearing. Greg Abbott. We're just going to deal with it. Wants to sit on this lead right now. I don't think he's going to do something stupid like that. No, yeah. Again. Yeah. Bro. And let's see what lengthened his lead again. Watch this from uh, Beto. Or, <laughs> speaking of uh, Abbott and, uh, and, yeah. and his lead Giving over this guy. Speech yesterday. Check out what Beto did. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. S- sit down. You're out of, you're out of <laughs> line and an embarrassment. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Dad Patrick was no, the first to, get his ass out to this tell this guy to <laughs> shut up and sit down. This is totally the mayor. <laughs> Sir, you're out of line. Sir, you're out of line. Sir, you are out of line. Please leave this auditorium. This is great. The mayor of Uvalde, listen to him. I can't believe you're a sick son of a bitch that would come to a deal like this to make a political issue. (laughs) So true. I think that really, really, really backfired on him. And I I can't imagine anybody saying, yeah, that was the right thing to do. Hey, yeah, that was really good. Did you see what Beto did? That was fantastic. I'm going to vote for him now. And that's what he thought was going to happen. Right. But no. Yeah. That Uvalde no. mayor, Don McLaughlin, he is no fan of Greg Abbott. He endorsed uh, Huffines in the primary. Really? But I think wow. that moment right there of him interjecting and really doing the play-by-play for us uh, and putting Beto in his place. Yeah. Not only did that help Abbott, but I think, like, you're right. 
it, it more so emphasized how much of an idiot Beto is. Beto is, yeah. Yeah, he's a moron. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Except he was asked about that recently, and uh, no, I don't want to take anything from anybody. Mm-hmm. I, ju- I just want to protect the Second Amendment. <laughs> Do ya? Wait, what? <laughs> oh, okay. Huh. Wow, you got some strong convictions there, don't you? Hell yes, I'm going to take your AR-15 when I'm running for President of the United States. Absolutely not! I am all about the Second Amendment when you're running for Texas governor. Hmm. That's uh, That's powerful. Uh, somebody posted this video. I love this. That nicely sums up where the scientific community is today when they talked to a biologist in Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. People talk glibly about science. What is science? Mm. People coming out of a university with a master's degree or a PhD, you take them into the field and they, they mm. literally don't believe anything unless there's a peer reviewed paper. Mm. It's the only thing they accept. And you say to them, but let's observe, let's think, let's discuss. They don't do it. Mm. It's just, is it in a peer-reviewed paper or not? That's their view of science. I think it's pathetic. Gone into universities as bright young people, they come out of them brain dead, not even knowing what science means. They think it means peer-reviewed papers, etc. No, that's academia. Mm. And if a paper is peer-reviewed, it means everybody thought the same, therefore they approved it. An unintended consequence is that when new knowledge emerges, new scientific insights, they can never, ever be peer-reviewed. So we're blocking all new advances in science that are big advances. If you look at the breakthroughs in science, Almost always, they don't come from the center of that profession. They come from the fringe. The finest candle makers in the world couldn't even think of electric lights. They don't come Mm. from within. They often come from outside the brakes. Mm. We're going to kill ourselves because of stupidity. Yep. Nice. We're going to kill ourselves because of stupidity. He's absolutely right, of course. I think we all know that. Does that not sum up the last two years beautifully? Sure does. Sure does. Ask him what a woman is, though. He's a biologist. He should be able to tell us. Uh Could he have told us? That was a missed opportunity for that reporter. Yeah, but Mr. Biologist, uh, what is a woman? Nobody can seem to figure that out in the United States. Can you help us with that? The thing is, Pat, the irony is that that interview was recorded a few years ago. Oh, was it really? So the science has changed. Yeah. So his answer would be outdated on what is a woman. Probably right. You're right. But was his would his answer have been peer reviewed? No, it wouldn't have been because he doesn't believe in that. So oh, the greatest candle makers <laughs> in the world couldn't even imagine electric lights. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. That's, that's so true. Huh. All right. Mm-hmm. Just like the horse and buggy people couldn't imagine, uh, you know, the combustion engine, gas powered vehicles. What does it say about our society today, Pat? Where the simplest things like this guy. Mark Robinson on guns earlier. The the simplest things are the most profound now. Yeah. It says it <laughs> says we're on the wrong track. Yeah. It says we're going down the drain. Uh, all right. We've got overtime coming up to enjoy. And then uh, we'll see you back here on Pat Gray Unleashed tomorrow. Pat Gray. Only on the Blaze Radio Network.